So first, uh, we did want to just start with um, a land acknowledgement before we get started with our presentation. Um, so we do want to acknowledge the land that we're gathered on, or we will be when you come to the UC Davis campus. Uh, so for thousands of years, this land has been home of the Potwin people. Today, there are three federally recognized Putwin tribes, uh, the Cachal Dihi ba Band of Wintun Indians of the Calusa Indian community, the Kletzel Dihi Wintun Nation, and the Yocha Dihi Wintun Nation. Uh, so the Putwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It's been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. And we're honored and grateful to be here today on their traditional lands. Okay, so um, here's a brief overview of our agenda for today. So we'll be going over all of these things on the screen. I won't read them out because we will be getting to them shortly. Um, so for today's um, webinar, please submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A feature. You should see a button um, in your Zoom for Q&A. We won't have the chat enabled just yet. Um, until we get to breakout rooms uh, for the major specific information. But any questions that you have, you can submit to the Q&A and we'll get to them towards the end. Um, and you can also review those questions and upvote them um, if you have the same questions. So be sure to check what questions have already been submitted um, and we'll be focused on the ones that have the most upvotes um, to start off with. Uh, we will be adding some helpful links uh, to resources in the chat that we're talking about, so you can also look for the information there. Okay, so for Aggie advising, here's the steps that you'll want to start with um, as you're getting started um, at UC Davis. A lot of you have maybe already started some of these, but for those of you that haven't or aren't aware what the steps are, very first one is to create your computing account for UC Davis. So this is what you need to access Aggie 101 and all Aggie advising services. Um, that's basically your email address. Um, and then complete Aggie 101. So that's like an overview of um, orientation. Basically that's the first step of orientation, um, gives you a great overview of the university and what we have to offer. Um, and then the next step would be to complete the College of Letters and Science Canvas advising modules, and you should be getting emails um, about these things. Um, so just check your UC Davis email regularly. That's where we send all the information. And then we have major Aggie advising. So once you've finished those first three steps, that's where your major advising comes in. Um, today is our group Aggie advising information session, so it's okay if you haven't already done those first three, um, but you're here, that's totally fine. Um, but this is your intro to major advising. Um, and then we have appointments available over the summer with one of our major advisors. These are optional, but they're just recommended if you have complex transfer credit concerns or questions about building your schedule, uh, we will be available all summer to help. Um, and then we also have drop-in advising. So if you're not able to make an appointment or you just have some quick questions, we'll be doing that weekly over the summer as well. So that's just for like quick questions or you want to check your schedule. Okay, so here's an overview of what academic advising looks like at UC Davis because it's probably different from your community college that you're coming from. So advising at UC Davis is something we call decentralized. And what that means is there's at least two different offices that you're gonna be going to for advising. So whereas your community college probably had one advisor that was like kind of a generalist, we have more specialized advising. So the first main office is your major advising office. So that's us. Um, so we can help you with anything related to your major uh, requirements and any minors if they're in our office as well. Um, recommendations for classes, so selecting classes to complete your major requirements, making an academic plan, things like that. Um, and then also major related research and internships, career exploration, um, we can be your go-to people for that. And then the other office, the other main office that you'll be advising, getting advising from is the college advisors. And these are, this is the dean's office, you might hear the term, um, or the College of Letters and Science. All of those things are the same uh, group. And that's for 
college and university requirements. So that's things like your general education or I get C certification if you got one of those. We got a lot of questions in our first webinar about I get C. Those are all going to be going to the College of Letters and Science. So if you have any questions about how to submit it or where whether it got um, created um, or whether it got like received by UC Davis, um, send those questions to the College of Letters and Science. Um, they also will advise on your upper division and total unit requirements, your writing requirement, uh, foreign language requirement if you have Bachelor of Arts. Um, and then they also are the ones that would help you with permission to drop um, if at some point during your time at UC Davis, you want to drop a class after the deadline, you would talk to them about that as well. And this is kind of a lot of information, but it is covered in those Aggie advising modules in Canvas. So be sure to check there if you're feeling a little lost. Um, they go into a lot of detail there. Okay, and then this is our major advising team. Uh, these are our staff advisors that you can make appointments with. Um, most of them are here today and will be talking to you so they can introduce themselves there. I'm Jillian, I realized I didn't introduce myself. Um, so I'm there in the yellow. Um, so we're your staff advisors you can make appointments with or see and drop in advising sometimes. Um, and we can be kind of the go-to people for your major requirements, helping you make academic plans. Um, and we can also help direct you to the right place. If you're not sure where to go, you can always start with us. We also have lovely peer advisors. This is our current team of this past academic year. Um, so we have an amazing team that are really well-trained about our all of our major and minor requirements, resources that are available at UC Davis. Um, and they can really give you a student perspective on classes because these are students in the majors that you're studying. Um, so they are taking some of the classes that you will be taking um, they can give you some advice on academic planning um, and all things like that. And then this is just a, a view of our wonderful building. We're in Young Hall is where our in-person advising is located. So most of our advising over the summer will be remote via Zoom. Um, but if you have an appointment uh, over the summer or once the academic year starts in person, this is where you'll go. No matter what your major is, um, You'll see a, it says psychology on the front, but we do advising for all the majors that we talked about. So Young Hall is your go-to place. Okay, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Padone to talk about our majors. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Padone and I'm also a staff advisor. Um, so it's nice to meet you all here. Um, I will be talking about our majors. And so as you can see here, we do advise for the four different majors here for psychology, cognitive science, philosophy, and science and technology studies. Um, I won't read the numbers, but we do serve a lot of undergraduates uh, within the Yale cluster. So just wanted to give a visual for you all, um, the amount of students that we do serve and also the faculty that we have in our different majors. Next, please. And so within our majors, we do have different um, emphases that you can specialize in. Um, so you can see on the screen here, we have different options. Um, we have a BS and AB degree options for the different majors. The BS stands for a Bachelor of Science, and then the AB uh, stands for RTM Baccalaureus, which is, which is just the Latin way of saying a Bachelor of Arts. So for our psychology and cognitive science majors, we do have both a BS and an AB degree option for both of them. The AB options for psychology and cognitive science are more general um, majors and studies. And then the BS options for both of them, um, as you can see in psychology, we have a quantitative emphasis and a biology emphasis. For cognitive science, we have the for the BS degree a neuroscience and a, gen, uh, a computational emphasis. For philosophy and science, science and technology studies, um, those majors we only have an AB degree option. And um, for philosophy, we have uh, three different emphases. So we have a general emphasis, and then uh, the pre medicine and pre law emphasis. And then science and technology studies, we also have uh, different emphases. Um, as listed here too. So we have a general one, but in addition, we have a law and innovation, health and environment, data and media technologies, and history and philosophy of science. So lots and lots of different um, choices to choose from. 
Um, we will be talking and delving a little bit deeper into these different emphases within the major specific breakout rooms. And so feel free to um, you know, ask us about these different tracks um, in those breakout rooms as well. So next, please. Um, so some of you might be interested in graduate school and um, are wondering like if it matters if you should pursue an AB or a BS. Um, and the answer is generally it doesn't matter. Um, you, you can choose either an AB or a BS. Um, it's actually more imperative that you um, focus on completing the prerequisite courses that are necessary for those graduate programs that you are interested in. Um, so an AB degree is usually sufficient if you'd rather choose not to do a BS degree. Um, if you are pre-health, completing a psychology BS of BS biology emphasis might be beneficial um, as it is structured to support you in completing more um, of the pre-health prerequisite like, programs or prerequisite courses that you need for those programs. Um, so a strategy, we uh, recommend students to become better candidates for graduate programs or graduate school is to gain experiences and participate in extracurricular activity, activities that will you know, help prepare you for those fields. And so you know, trying to get more research experiences and internships. Next slide, please. So um, there are a lot of majors at UC Davis. Um, and if you decide that one of our majors is not a, a best fit for you and your career interests, you can change majors. Um, the earliest you can change your major is in winter quarter. That's because you need to have a UC Davis GPA before you can switch. Um, you, if you are interested in switching or even double majoring, you have to make sure that you understand there might be some additional requirements to declare into that major. So make sure that you do your research and understand declaration requirements um, if you are looking to switch or, or double major. Um, and then you can change your major in OASIS. And like we mentioned, the earliest you can do that is in winter quarter. Um, important note is that um, you as a transfer student coming into our majors, uh, specifically for psychology and cognitive science, you will be admitted as um, by default um, to the BS option. So if, you're, if you want to do the AB option, that's totally OK. Go ahead and start courses with uh, towards the AB option. You do not have to take any classes towards the BS option. We'll just have you officially changed over in winter quarter. Next, please. So um, for double majors, if you do plan a double major or is interested in it, um, it's very important that you plan early and that you meet with us um, to develop uh, an academic plan to see how that'll fit uh, within your graduation plan and timeline. Um, we have a policy that you can overlap no more than 20% of the upper division coursework between um, the two majors. So that uh, typically comes uh, down to one or two courses or four to uh, nine units. And we can also help you with identifying any overlapping courses as well. So definitely feel reassured that we can do this together. Um, and so you kind of also want to take into consideration how does the double major align with your career goals? Is it uh, much better if you maybe decide to do a minor if you don't have that much time? Um, depending on the major that you do um, decide to pursue, there might be more courses that you need to complete within the timeline that you're looking to stay here at UC Davis. Um, and then again, the earliest you can change your major or declare a double major would be winter quarter. Next, please. And so um, with our department, the Yellow Cluster, we also offer minors. Um, so we do have a psychology minor. We have a, a philosophy and philosophy with a logic emphasis minor and also a history and philosophy of science um, minor as well. There are other minors that you can definitely take a look at. Um, so you can definitely explore that too if you're interested. But we can also support you with um, any of our minors listed here too, if you were interested in pursuing them. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Gratia and I'm another staff advisor. Um, so I, I know many of you probably have questions about um, classes, what you should be taking or how to um, create a fall quarter class schedule. 
Uh, so we'll be going over um, a few like recommendations and guidelines to help you create your fall quarter class schedule. Um, so um, to start, um, we do have some guidelines. Um, so um, we generally recommend taking um, anywhere from 12 to 16 units in fall quarter. Um, keep in mind that 12 is the minimum um, required to be a full-time student um, here at UC Davis. Um, so anywhere from 12 to 16. Um, and that's made up of um, two classes, about two classes for your major. And then um, in addition to one to two additional classes um, that will go towards um, college or, and university requirements. Um, so these are just general guidelines, but of course you um, may want to adjust that schedule um, depending on other um, commitments that you have, um, jobs or um, internship and or research um, that you are involved in aside from that. Um, and then I also, um, so UC Davis follows the Carnegie rule, um, which states that um, for every one unit, um, students are um, expected to complete about three hours of work every week for that one class. So for example, for a four unit class, that would be about 12 units a week on, dedicated towards that one class. Um, so if we look at a 16 unit schedule, um, 16 unit quarterly schedule, um, that's about 48 hours of studying and class time, uh, both in and out of class per week. Um, so just some things to consider when you are um, building your schedule. Um, yeah, so that you um, find what works best for you. And um, yeah. And then finally, I also wanted to add that um, while many of you might be coming from a semester uh, school, um, at UC Davis, we follow the quarter schedule, which is um, only 10 weeks long compared to um, you know, a semester. Um, so it does um, tend to be fast paced. Um, so that's something that you should also consider um, when you are building your fall schedule so that you, um, you know, you take into consideration um, other things that you're involved in and have a, a schedule that works for you. And then also um, staff advisors um, over the summer are creating um, a suggested academic plan um, for you. Um, they will, they should be uploaded um, to your OASIS student records. Um, before you do go to register for fall quarter. Um, so um, stay on the lookout for that. And it's just a suggested plan um, uh, for you to start. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay, so here we have um, an example of um, a fall quarter class schedule for a psych major. Um, so this is a 16 uh, unit schedule. Uh, for a student who has already completed the Psych 41, which is um, research methods in psychology. Um, so so um, we have here um, Psych 100, which is Intro to Cognitive Psychology. Um, we have Psych 151, Social Psychology. Both of these are major classes. Um, and then they um, will balance that out with a class towards a minor um, or upper division units. And then finally, another class um, that will go towards um, your unit requirement. Um, so for this example, this is a 16 unit schedule. Um, so we're looking at about 48 hours per week um, in this for this schedule. Um, and then uh, one other note that we wanted to uh, make um, about upper division classes. Um, so you will need to, to complete some upper division courses, and those are classes numbered between 100 to 199. So for example, Psych 100 and 151, they are both upper division class courses. And then um, we also have lower division classes are those that are numbered between uh, 1 to 99. Uh, so 
you can find um, your major requirements on the major worksheets um, here on our Yellow Cluster website um, for each of the majors and um, minors as well. Um, or you can also uh, use the um, UC Davis general catalog. Um, that's a great way to see a list of all the classes um, offered um, for each major. Um, and you can also see a requirements such as unit requirements um, on there as well. And um, we also have the OASIS degree worksheets that we'll be going over a little bit more into depth um, later on in the presentation, but those are also a good way to keep track of your major requirements electronically. Um, next slide, please. Um, so in addition to major requirements, um, you, you will also have to um, complete a few um, college and university requirements. Uh, so for example, um, all students um, are required to take um, an upper division writing requirement um, so that's an UWP 101, 102, or 104, um, and then you will need to take um, 64 upper division units and um, 180 total units for graduation. Um, and then if you have an AGETC certificate, um, this will typically cover the area breadth requirements. So for Bachelor of Science degrees, that includes the 90 units of natural science and mathematics. And for um, Bachelor of Arts degrees, that um, includes the foreign language requirement. Um, and for any questions about your college and university requirements, you will want to reach out to the College of Letters and Science Advising Office for support with that. Um, and then we also provide this big picture um, so of things to keep in mind um, when you are planning your quarterly schedule. Um, so you do want to make sure you um, are making progress to meet the 180 units to graduate. Um, and then um, there's also a 225 unit max. Um, and then I think. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Alyssa Magorian. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I'm an undergraduate advisor in the Yellow Cluster, and I'll be covering the next set of slides. Um, so some of you <laughs> have been putting some questions in the chat again about IGETC and your transfer credit. Um, if you haven't already done so, we just wanted to remind you to please, please, please send your official transcripts and your IGETC certificate to the UC Davis Undergraduate Admissions Office. Um, they are due July 1st, um, but if you're struggling to meet that deadline, please know there's a little bit of grace. Just please be in contact with undergraduate admissions um, about that if you expect your transcripts to be arriving later. Um, and just to share that, uh, that website with where to send the information, um, we'll go ahead and put this in here. And if you just scroll down, oops, you can see uh, that they have the information on where to send your transcript and your IGETC certificate. So this is the address, or you can send it electronically if your community college uh, has parchment, Naviance, et cetera. Uh, so we also like to emphasize that nearly all community college classes come in as lower division credit and lower division courses are not equivalent to upper division major requirements. And so even if a course that you have taken has the same exact title, um, because it is considered a lower division class at the community college, it does not replace the upper division version at UC Davis. Um, so we like to emphasize that we can certainly discuss that more in our major specific uh, breakouts um, as you know that's that's appropriate. Um, if your community college class articulates per assist.org, it will appear on your academic record as the UC Davis course um, kind of it's set in parentheses, though so um, there's just a quick example here uh, so. 
an equivalent to Psych 1 at UC Davis, which is um, the general principles of psychology. Um, you may have taken uh, general psych at Sacramento City College, Psych 300. So this is how it's going to appear. And then we have another example from a Woodland Community College. <laughs> um, if the course does not articulate to a class at UC Davis, it will show as general transfer credit. Um, so this other example in the gray here is for a beginning chemistry class that a student took at Sac City College. And it's not articulating to anything at UC Davis. So it's just in the parentheses as uh, chem transfer one. So that means you do not have a, you know, a direct articulated course um, and it's just giving you units. So as Katya and others mentioned, we will be helping uh, to do that transfer credit review and to build your academic plans based on that. Um, but if you have uh, taken California Community College, or if you have um, a class that doesn't articulate, or you've taken classes at a four-year university and you believe the course is equivalent to um, a UC Davis course for your major, you can use a couple of tools to, to check that out. We have a transfer evaluation system uh, to see if there's an, a pre-approved equivalency. And uh, that is just listed here. And if you kind of scroll down, you can search by institution. You can kind of go through um, by the institution name and then click on that institution. I'm just going to pull up an example from Arizona State. And looks like it's taking a while to load, uh, but it has all of the courses um, that have been reviewed over the last so many years. And you can see uh, when the agreement um, you know, kind of begins and ends as well. So it's good to, to know when it ends <laughs> um, because it's a five-year window basically that um, courses are approved for. Um, if there is not a pre-approved equivalency that you see in tests, as we call it, um, you can certainly submit an equivalency review request for major specific classes um, on our website. And um, we have, we'll dive more into our, our transfer website um, in a bit, but this course equivalency section of that website um, has some links to pre-approved course equivalencies across our four majors. And um, in our form section, um, you can also request a course equivalency. Um, so it's linked here, but it's also in our, in our form section of the website as well. So I kind of already covered this slide. I forgot I had it in here <laughs> separately. Um, but we will be uploading a transfer credit review based on the information that we have uh, for you. And at this point in time, since tra uh, yeah, uh, transcripts are still being received and still being processed by admissions, and that takes a moment, um, we may not have your final transcripts yet. So we may be uh, only able to see what you had in your application. Um, so please know if you're taking a summer class and you know that you have that summer class and you're going to transfer that over, you're going to send your transcripts for that summer class, um, we may not be able to see it right now. So take that into consideration. <laughs> um, we're only able to do the review on what we can see at this point in time. Um, and when you go to um, OASIS, you can view the transfer credit review once it's uploaded um, in the advising records section. And we have a link here, um, but I will also do a demo. So, um, when you log into OASIS, we have a, a test student here, so um, you can uh, see the important dates listed here. You can see your advising resources listed here um, and additional uh, campus resources listed below as well. But if you are uh, if you got a notification and maybe you misplaced the link um, about your transfer credit review, you can always go to the advising record tab click on that and it'll be under your documents and files. All right. We also wanted to give you like a little bit of a sneak peek and like help guide you using tools for more advanced planning beyond fall quarter. Um, so 
degree worksheets are the tool that we use to um, help track your progress towards your major requirements. So it, it this form actually outlines your major requirements. It also shows your major GPA, which is really handy, um, but it does not include um, college and university requirements. So let's go check that out. So if you go to the degree worksheets tab in OASIS, um, we have some saved worksheets as examples in our test student case, but um, you may not have a saved worksheet yet if we haven't completed your academic plan yet. Um, so if this is the case and you want to get a head start, you are more than welcome to go to the new worksheet section. Under find a worksheet, once you click in this box, you can go ahead and type uh, the major that you are interested in. Um, so if you pull up cognitive science as an example, um, you can see the different uh, options there. You'll want to click the, the main one. Those are the most recent um, major requirements. So those are the ones that you're going to follow. So for example, cognitive science AB, pull up that degree worksheet, and it's broken down into two different sections um, and then subsections as well. But the prep subject matter is the first main section of your major requirements. And um, under this section, it shows all of the courses that you have to take for this section. For instance, intro to cognitive science, general psychology, research methods, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, we will create one of these. Um, once your transcripts are uploaded to OASIS, you can use the uh, current courses drop down button to select the courses that apply uh, to that major requirement. Um, so the student has taken Linguistics 1, you can click on that, it pulls right in. Um, if you expect to take a course in the future and you're just thinking ahead, um, say you want to take Intro to Cog Sci in fall quarter, um, this uh, handy little thing can help you map that out. We have fall, winter, and spring quarters, and we also have summer sessions. Um, you're not expected to take summer session classes, but you can if you want to. As you go down, the depth subject matter of the degree worksheet is listed here, and it breaks it down by the different requirements. So um, there's the core courses for this major, Psychology 100, Philosophy 112. Um, you have your Group A requirement, Group B, et cetera, et cetera. So each major is different, obviously, with different courses, but all of those courses that apply to the requirements are listed here. And um, as you go to the bottom, you'll see that's where the major GPA is listed. Um, and you'll also want to be sure to save your degree worksheet um, if you want to keep it. So we encourage you to create that degree worksheet when you have a moment to do that advanced planning. And we will help you with that if you want to make an advising appointment as well. Another great planning tool is your academic plan. And I know we're going to create an, a two-year academic plan for you, but it is entirely suggested and it will have placeholders. And so at some point after you receive that academic plan from an advisor, we encourage you to go through that degree worksheet, um, look at the specific classes that you are interested in, see what the prereqs are for those classes, and then make your academic plan your own. You want it to be relevant to, to you, to your interests, and to your goals. And so in OASIS, the, the way that you can do that is go to forms and petitions. And um, this test student has a lot of <laughs> examples here. Um, but if you if you want to create a whole brand new blank academic plan, you can simply click on submit a new form and academic plan. You'll want to give your plan a little name so you know what it is and you can differentiate it from other plans that you may make. You can make multiple plans. <laughs> um, for example, for our COGSI AB student, I'll just put that in and you can say two year plan. You can, you can do double majors if you're interested in that and see what that looks like. But basically how you use this tool is um, as you scroll down, um, well, of course, spring quarter just ended for us, so it's still showing on this page, but um, 
If you are taking any summer classes, you can pl plug those in. Um, if you're just starting in fall, you can go ahead and um, plug in classes in fall here, as well as through the rest of the year, as well as if you go to another year, you'll see a whole nother section there. And the way this works is, um, let's say you wanted to take that COGSI 1 class, the Intro to COGSI, you just type in the subject code, CGS for cognitive science, and then the number, and it will pull up. Um, if you're not sure yet, and what you'll probably see in a lot of our academic plans for you are some placeholders. Um, for example, um, that CGS group A uh, requirement. There's lots of options for that. So we're just going to put a placeholder and let you decide, you know, which class you want to take to fulfill that option. After you have finished making your academic plan or revising it, be sure to save it um, so you can view it for the future. All right, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Joelle. Hello, everybody. So I'm Joelle. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I'm also a staff advisor for the Yellow Cluster. Um, as Alyssa mentioned before, we have the um, Transfer Student Resources website. So it looks like this when you first click on the link. Um, here you'll be able to find your major requirement information, the link to the transfer credit, and placement exam information. Um, so placement exams are going to be required for chemistry, computer science, um, foreign language if you need to take any foreign language still, and math placements. Additionally, we have some sample schedules that you can look at. So if you still need a few lower division courses, um, and again, we'll be sending the academic plans for you as well, but in the future, if you want to create your own. Um, so two major related lower division courses. So this could be Psych 41, the research methods course, Philosophy 13G, um, Science, Math, or anything else. And then your Chemistry, Calculus, Programming courses that will need the placement exam information. Then we recommend doing one major related upper division course and taking an upper division course that's like an elective, a minor course, or doing a seminar. So that way you are getting acquainted with the campus or doing something fun to offset some of the not heavier, but like major related courses. Um, if you need only upper division courses, then we recommend two major related upper division courses. Um, and if you have completed a prerequisite at another institution, you might need to submit the prereq petition um, in Schedule Builder to make sure that you're able to enroll smoothly into the courses here. Um, and in addition to the two major related upper division courses, again, taking another elective or minor course or doing a seminar course just to have a nice, uh, well-rounded schedule. We also have research and internship opportunities. So you can do research with a faculty member. Um, there is a list of labs that accept undergrad research assistance on our website, and we have a virtual lab tour. So this is the website for the virtual lab tour, and it's a little video for Dr. Brian Trainer's lab, Ecology. And this is the Psychology and Cognitive Science Research page. Um, and this is where you can find like psych and cog sci related labs, search by lab, the PI, and get more information that way. We also have internship opportunities on and off campus. So we have the internship and career center that can help place you into internships and get more information on that. We have the UC Center Sacramento internship program and the Washington program. Um, you're able to get units for both research and internships, and then it helps prepare you for your post plan or post graduation plans and a career. 
We also have study abroad, and it's an amazing opportunity to travel, um, get more life experience, and see what other universities across the globe have to offer. Um, study abroad is available for all majors um, through the Global Learning Club. So you can do uh, summer abroad, quarter abroad, semester abroad. There's a variety of different programs that you'd be able to apply for and participate in. Um, and they're not necessarily major specific. So if you're looking at any program, we can definitely help um, get the process started to see like, can you get major related credit for any study abroad programs or plan around a study abroad um, semester to make sure that you're going to be graduating on time and to see when's the best time to take your other major related courses. And then we have our yellow cluster website resources. So there you'll find advising information. So how to schedule an appointment, um, stop by for drop in and our email advising addresses. Um, you'll also find the course equivalency databases these steps. Okay, so this is the advising website for the yellow cluster. And then the course equivalency that Alyssa showed earlier um, and the course substitutions. The annual course schedules for psychology, philosophy, and STS. Looks like we'll be posting the 23-24 ones soon. And then our forms petitions and the career and grad score grad school exploration pages. So the forms and worksheets have like requesting a major degree check, um, the equivalency request form, and then the variable unit form for those research and internship unit courses. And then this is the career and grad school research page that we have for all four of the majors. And then we have also the general catalog. So it's going to show all of the courses being offered across all departments in UC Davis. Um, so it gives you the course descriptions, what prerequisites that are required and major and college degree requirements. So it's a good resource to see like if it falls under any GEs um, and how it satisfies major requirements. Um, as far as the campus resources, we also have the Offices of Educational Opportunity and Enrichment Services, so OEOES. Um, so it's going to be the pre-grad and pre-law advising, success coaching, workshops on time management and learning strategies, et cetera. Um, the health professions advising is going to be a great resource if you're looking to get into medical school. Um, they'll tell you what some recommended prereqs for. Um, med school are, uh, best ways of applying, etc. Um, the Student and Disability Center will be where you will go if you need to request any accommodations. And the Student Health and Counseling Services is going to help you with, um, there's resources for like mental health, um, doctor's office, etc. So you can take a look through that website. Okay, I'll pass it back to Alyssa. Thank you so much, Joelle. All right, so I will be wrapping up our last few slides before we go into our major specific breakouts with uh, some really good detailed information by a major. Um, but before we do that, we just wanted to remind you one last time what your summer 2023 advising options are. So um, we have Zoom drop-in advising each Friday dedicated to new transfer students from 10 to noon, starting next Friday, June 30th, all the way through um, August 11th, right before your uh, pastimes um, are for registering for fall quarter. Um, and then we'll have some registration periods uh, like support uh, on those days that you register as well. Um, drop-in is really dedicated for quick questions, most appointments should be about 15 minutes. Um, I should call it session. No appointment is actually needed. You just go to uh, the, the link that we have here for uh, tr transfer drop-in and it just goes right to our virtual um, sign-in page um, and you'll want to go there Fridays between 10 a.m. and noon. 
We also have Zoom appointments with staff advisors um, Monday through Friday, starting this Monday. Um, these are optional, they're not required, but they are definitely great uh, to have if you have more in-depth questions, if you have kind of a complex uh, transfer equivalency kind of scenario, um, or if you um, just don't know where to start with everything, you're really confused, we can help walk you through um, your next steps. Again, we do recommend that you do Aggie 101 first. That's a really good foundation. Then do your um, Aggie uh, Canvas modules and then, uh, you know, look at your academic plan that we give you. And hopefully that will help build a foundation and then come to us with, with more questions from there. We have a handy little screenshot of the advising appointment system. When you go into that system, it's just simply at appointments.ucdavis.edu. Um, when you go into that system, you'll want to select the one that's titled PSC uh, PHI STS CGS Advising Center. That's us. That's the yellow cluster. Those are our four majors. Um, and when you select that, um, it'll take you to um, where all of our advise, advising schedules are available. You can see which appointments are open. And our appointments typically open at least about two weeks in advance. Um, I think we might be opening it a little bit further out for transfer students in case you need to have that, but um, right now it's slow, so you may only be able to see up to those two weeks. All right. Um, and as we have been emailing you, <laughs> um, we really want to know what your interests are, what your major emphases um, may be. And so please, 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 if you have not already, please complete this new transfer major emphasis survey. Um, our kind of soft deadline is for you to do it today. So if you haven't done the survey already, please take a moment to do it. It's really quick. Just ask for your name, um, what major you're in and what emphasis you want to do, as well as any like other interests you may have with a double major or a minor or careers. And that way, we can create the most accurate academic plan, you know, tailored to your, your interests and your goals. Um, so we are trying to get through the academic plan creations for you within a week or two of uh, when you submitted the survey. We have received a high number of survey responses kind of right now up, up to this point. So um, it'll definitely be closer to that two weeks right now to get through all of that. Um, and typically we say it's best to meet with an advisor after you've received your academic plan, um, but it's not the end of the world if you haven't received it yet. Um, we'll try to prioritize um, as best we can. Um, but please know the appointment goes so much smoother once we have that plan for you. And um, there is uh, an option within that survey if you truly do not know which emphasis you want to pursue, that's okay. <laughs> um, come make an advising appointment and we can walk you through that. You can also come to our drop in advising next Friday um, to talk to a, a peer advisor as well um, about the different options um, and have their student perspective as well. All right, so um, as you you know, kind of navigate those advising options over the summer, you can also email us. Um, our email advising inboxes are monitored by our whole team of staff advisors and peer advisors, and it's a great way to answer, uh, get your, your quick questions answered. All right, so at this time, we will go ahead and uh, take a moment for some general questions in the Q&A. Yeah, we have a lot of questions about IGETSI and transcripts and all of that. I know that is a hot topic and very confusing. Um, just a reminder, IGETSI is part of your college and university requirements. So any specific questions you have about your IGETSI certification should go to the College of Letters and Science, but we can try to answer some of the general questions that we've gotten. Um, the one with the most upvotes is, do you have to submit the IGETSI certification if you submitted your transcripts? Yes, you do. It is a separate document. You have to request it from your community college specifically. Um, so if you aren't sure if it got submitted when you submit your transcripts, please contact your community college and they can let you know if they've submitted it or if they haven't, um, then they can do it now. And also the, the IGETSI certification doesn't have to be in by that same transcript deadline. 
it's okay if it comes in later, but you know, the earlier the better, just so you can prepare if there is anything extra that you need to submit. Um, so if you completed IGETSI and sent the certification, do you have to take any lower division courses? Um, kind of depends on your major. If you've completed all of the lower division courses for your major, then typically, yeah, you would just focus on the upper division requirements that you still have left to do. Um, you can take lower division if you have room for it in your schedule. Um, if you're looking at an academic plan that we've made for you, it might say units to graduate. If it just says units to graduate, that can be upper or lower division. Sometimes we'll specify upper division units to graduate because you do have to reach a minimum of those, but lower division, if you have room, you can take those. Um, Okay, more questions about transcripts. Do you have to submit high school's transcripts? What if your high school transcripts haven't been received? Um, I'm gonna just refer all of those questions to undergraduate admissions. They're gonna be your go-to place about your transcript submission. Um, we unfortunately can't answer any questions about that process or what the, the deadlines are for that other than the July 1st deadline that we know about. Um, yeah, same thing for the other transcripts. So anything like that, just go to undergraduate admissions and they can help you out. Um, is the IGETSI not included on your transcript? How do you get the IGETSI certification? Um, again, you would just contact your community college to submit your IGETSI certification. They would submit that specifically to the university. Um, okay, I think that's all the general questions that we've gotten. There were some that we answered um, via text or by typing, and I'll just answer a couple of those that I think are relevant to everybody. Um, somebody asked about the psych major being submitted as a BS. That is just the, the default. All students um, admitted as a psych or cognitive science major come in as the BS just by default. If you plan to do the Bachelor of Arts, you would just follow the Bachelor of Arts, and in your second quarter is when you can submit that official change of major form. But if you know that the Bachelor of Arts is your plan, don't stress about placement exams or, or STEM classes or anything like that. Um, it's just a formality until you get to your second quarter. Um, somebody asked about the how many classes to be taking. Um, so we are in the quarter system. Um, our classes are typically four units each. So the minimum number of classes that you would take to be full time would be about three if all of your classes are four units. The minimum is 12 units. Um, we got a question about the upper div writing requirement. Um, and I kind of marked it as answered because we were talking about it in the slide. Um, but just a, a note about upper div writing. Again, that's a college of letters and science requirement. It's not a major requirement. So if you're looking at your OASIS degree worksheet, that's just your major requirements. So it's not gonna list any of your college and university requirements because those are again by the separate office. Um, and what was I gonna add? So it doesn't have to be taken in fall quarter and it doesn't have to be a major specific class. There is a major option, um, writing and human development and psychology. Some students like to take that, um, but there's also really great career related ones. So there's business writing, there's law writing, there's medical writing. Um, so it's really up to you of which one that you take, as long as it's one of the options, UWP 101, 102, or 104. And we are putting those in the plans that we're making. We're just putting like a placeholder for that because it is something that all students have to take um, or test out of. Um, okay, I think, are there any... Yeah, all of these are about transcripts. So undergrad admissions will be your go-to place for transcript questions. Um, okay, so we are gonna go to our major specific like breakout rooms. Um, so we'll be able to get into more of the nitty gritty in your major um, in the breakout room. So welcome to the Cognitive Science major. We're super excited to meet with you all to help you plan your courses towards the major. Um, so on my screen here, we have the different emphases options um, as we just briefly went over them in the general um, advising session. Um, but yes, we have the cognitive science AB general study. This is um, this major is a bit more flexible. Um, you are able to take a lot more courses within the different group requirements. Um, it is a bit more flexible for uh, if you are interested in like counseling, clinical uh, psychology, teaching, 
um, and et cetera. And then for the BS options, we have the computational and neuroscience emphases. For computational, um, we do require computer programming courses. Um, this emphasis is meant for students who are more interested in uh, careers in technology um, and, and programming and such as UI UX design. Um, and then for the neuroscience uh, emphasis, um, it is geared more towards students who are interested in pre-health and um, more research careers. Next slide here. Um, so these are going to be the typical courses that will um, might transfer from your uh, previous community college to the cognitive science major here at UC Davis. Um, you can, um, depending on what uh, courses you took, uh, you might get uh, credit for our general psychology course, our Psych 1 course, our Psych 41, which is our research methods course, um, statistics, if you took that, um, linguistics, intro, introduction to linguistics, and um, introduction to symbolic logic, which is required for the cognitive science um, major. And then for the computational and neuroscience emphases, we do have more specific like courses that may transfer over if you took them during community college. So for the computational courses, if you took calculus classes, you may get credit for our Math 21 series, um, which we do require for that um, emphases. And then also the linear algebra, if you took that as well. And then the ECS 32 series or ECS 36 series, which is our computer programming courses. And then for neuroscience, um, since we do require calculus, biology, and physics, if you take in those um, in community college, you might also get credit for, for those in our Math 21 series, our Biz 2 series, and our um, physics series. So BIS stands for Biological Sciences. It's, it's not business classes. Um, some students get confused about that, but BIS is, stands for uh, Biological Sciences here at UC Davis. Um, I'm going to quickly demo the major worksheets. And so we went over, Alyssa went over um, how you can view those major degree worksheets in OASIS. Um, but the other way you can re you can see like major requirements specific to you know this, the different emphases is through our PDF version of our um, worksheets. And so um, I you know you would want to go to this website here for the 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 major requirements the PDF version of it. Um, and so if you go to this website, you'll see that there are the different there's different information if you for some reason was not in the cognitive science major and you want to declare in it, we have information about that too, how to declare uh, multiple different majors. And so we have a worksheet for the AB and then also for the BS um, different emphases here. So I'm just going to click on the AB as an example. You want to click on the worksheet here. Um, and this information is exactly the same information you see in OASIS the worksheets. It's just this is more kind of like a PDF version where you can print out and actually physically write on if if you prefer that. Um, so as you can see here, we have the prep subject matter. These are the lower division uh, requirements. If you've taken some at community college, you might have credit for some of them. If not, you will have to take them here at UC Davis. Um, and then there is the depth subject matter, which is our upper division requirements for the major. Um, so we break them down into different groups that you would need to complete. Um, so for different groups, we have a, a number of different like courses required for that. We also have the list of the courses you can choose uh, for that group. Um, so like I mentioned, this is the AB um, one, which is very, it's, it's much more flexible than the other two. Um, but yes, you can definitely take a look at that. And then... Um, let me just see if I missed anything here. Yeah, so I mentioned that for the prep subject matter, there are specific courses that you are required to take. And so we will always list those out. And then courses that you can choose from, we'll list the list. We will have a list that you could choose from for, for those different groups. Um, important to note, you do not have to take the group uh, courses requirements in any order you can take them in whatever order you want to. So uh, for example, if you wanted to complete 
your core, your group B courses, you can do that first and then go to your group A. That's totally okay. There's no order that you need to complete them. Um, Philosophy 13G is our Minds and Brains and Computers course, which is required for all three cognitive science majors. Um, we want to emphasize this because of uh, the regular philosophy course is just a lecture, there's no discussion. And so um, you are required to take the philosophy 13G course that has discussion. Um, the regular lecture one will not count towards the major. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then you'll notice on like our major uh, worksheets or the PDF that we in group A, you have to take an upper division cognitive science course. So as my cursor is right here for your group A, um, what that means is that you can either take an upper division cognitive science coded course or you can choose from this um, list right here. So it's gonna be on the second page of uh, this PDF version, what counts as the upper division cognitive science course. So you can actually choose from this to count as that group A top of the course, okay? Okay, yeah. so um, yeah, so um, now I'll be talking about um, a specific uh, requirement for the cognitive science uh, bachelor's of science in and the comp specifically the computational emphasis. Um, so if you haven't already completed the um, computer science series and you need to take it at UC Davis, um, you can um, take either the, the 32 series or the 36 series. Um, I, yeah, so the 36 series generally is more for computer science majors or and very um, more intense and program heavy. Um, and uh, just a few notes about these um, ECS courses, um, which is ECS stands for computer science. Um, so the 32C, ECS 32C um, is only offered in fall quarters. Um, so you'll want to be careful when planning out your courses, if that's something that you need to take um, to keep that in mind. Um, and then the 36, ECS 36A um, is only open for, um, for CGS majors during pass two. Um, so um, you can register or waitlist for the class during pass two. Um, if that's if that's something that you need. Uh, so for the neuroscience emphasis uh, for cognitive science majors, um, if you um, still need to complete the biology series at UC Davis, um, um, you might want to ask yourself if you have already um, taken general chemistry. Um, if you have, if you haven't taken general chemistry, we recommend you start with Biz 2B first, uh, then move on to Biz 2C and then Biz 2A. Um, this is because uh, Biz 2A is very chemistry heavy. So we want to make sure that you have um, the background um, uh, to be able to take it. So the recommended order if you haven't taken general chemistry is Biz 2B, 2C, and then 2A. Um, if you have already taken general chemistry, then you um, can take it in the regular order, uh, biz 2A, biz 2B, biz 2C. Um, and then if you're interested in um, um, being involved in research, um, we do have um, our website here has a list of um, has a way to look for labs. Um, so there's different ways that you can uh, search for labs and explore them. You can do that. You can look by um, specific lab, um, or if you have a prom, if you've taken a class and you have a professor whose research you're interested in, you can search by a specific faculty as well, um, also by location. Um, and then also some cognitive science students also 
um, do research in psychology labs that are related. Um, so there definitely are. Um, yeah, so you can see lists of, of different labs and you can play around with the website and see. There's also a virtual lab tour that you can um, explore as well uh, to see kind of what, what goes on behind um, inside labs um, in our departments. Um, so we recommend to apply to these specific um, research opportunities. We um, recommend that you take a look at the lab website, um, look into the details and read like um, one to two of the lab's most recent publications to get an idea of what um, what research is being um, conducted in that specific lab. And then we do have a centralized research um, application. However, um, the best way or the best strategy to find um, a research position is to contact the, um, the lab manager or the professor directly um, to learn more about the lab and um, also how to be a competitive applicant. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, if I may just like jump in for research opportunities. Um, so as Katya mentioned, we have the different ways that you can specifically apply to the labs, but if you wanted to apply to our centralized research application, you can also do that. Uh, this application actually allows you to um, apply to three labs at once um, if you were interested in you know, making sure you cast your uh, net wide to try to get a research um, uh, position. And so you can uh, you can do both ways. Just wanted to emphasize that you can definitely uh, connect and apply specifically through the labs themselves because um, they have specific websites that you can actually apply or you can um, and or also um, utilize our centralized application um, for that. You can do both for sure. Um, and then um, just some ways um, that you can get involved in your major. Um, there are some, uh, we do have the Cognitive Science um, Student Association, um, and uh, there's also Design Interactive, if you're in interested in um, UX or UI. Um, and those are just cognitive science specific, but there are many other organizations that are cognitive science related that you can um, look into. So um, some psychology related um, groups or associations that we have is UPA, which is the Undergraduate Psychology Association. Um, and then there are a lot of other mental health related clubs that you can explore on campus as well. And then um, some philosophy organizations um, are, for example, the Philosophy Club, um, and they do have an undergraduate conference. Um, UPAL um, is Philosophically Oriented Woman and um, the Minorities and Philosophy. Um, it's another great um, organization or club on campus if you are interested in getting involved. And um, now if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to ask them um, as many as you want. Yeah, since it is only yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you guys hear me? Yes, yep. Um, cool. Um, I just have a question about, um, are there any classes that you would recommend prioritizing um, for fall quarter, specifically like psych, um, 41, would that be one to really get out of the way in the first quarter? Yeah, if you have not taken Psych 41, I would highly recommend our, the Psych 41 Research Methods class because that is a prerequisite course for many of our upper division psychology courses. So I would definitely prioritize that if you have not taken that um, prior. Um, what is your intended emphasis for cognitive science? Um, I'm a computational emphasis. Gotcha. Okay. So yes, I would emphasize that, but maybe also 
you know, it, it kind of depends. Have you started on your computer science courses? Um, previously? Yeah, I did. Um, I think I did the equivalent to ECS 32A. Gotcha. Um, that was the only one my community college could check off. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, we definitely want students to kind of start with those as well because they're very impacted courses. And so um, any opportunity you can take those courses earlier, the better. Um, I mean, I don't want you to feel like pressured to start with those because you are going to be transitioning um, to the quarter system. So it might not be the greatest idea to start with like some really heavy computer programming courses. And so it's totally okay if you don't want to start with that in the fall. Um, but I do, I just want to make a note that those are a bit more impacted courses um, that if you have the opportunity to take them, um, definitely do so. Um, I would say linguistics one is not a very uh, important class. I, I feel like you don't have to prioritize right away if you haven't done linguistics. Um, it's not a prerequisite for a lot of our courses. So if you, if you want to push off linguistics, that's totally fine. Um, uh, let's see here. Philosophy 112, since you're required to take it for your group A, you might want to prioritize taking philosophy 12. That is the prereq for that course. Um, so maybe that would, those would be like the two that I would recommend if you have not taken yet. Um, would be the Psych 41 Research Methods in Philosophy 12. Okay, cool. Um, I also had a quick question about the reserve seating. So I'm right now I'm scheduled to be an intro to COGSI and it has eight reserve seats. Does that, do the reserve seats apply to first quarter only for transfer students or is it throughout the whole year? That's correct. It's only the first quarter, it's only fall quarter. Um, we only have reserve seats because you all are coming in as new students. So new students will include U.S. transfer students, also freshman students. So uh, starting winter quarter, there will be no reserve seats. Okay, so my class has eight reserve seats. So that I'm, that's all the freshmen, all the transfers for yes. that one class. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay, got it. Um. I don't know if you guys can answer this question, the difference between math 17 series and the 21 series calculus for regular calc and bio calc. Um, I know they're comparatively both hard, but um, which one would be the right one to take, do you think? So the way we explain the differences between 17 and 21, 21 is going to be your more traditional calculus. It's going to have that depth, that coverage of all topics within calculus. Um, I would definitely say if you're a little bit more interested in like computer, like, you know, uh, computer, like tech type of career, I would say I would recommend the 21 series versus the 17. The 17 is really meant for biological sciences, like pre-health, um, that they don't need that much math involved. Uh, Math 17 series is uh, the depth is not as heavy. They go into different topics that have different applications to the content. And so it is a bit more brief. It's not, they don't spend a lot of time with the application um, as it would as a traditional calculus class. It's, it's more towards like in this scenario in a hospital or, or whatever, right? According to the biological sciences track. So I would say, Think about 21 as your traditional series that if you're going to use math, uh, you know, regularly within your careers, I, that would be the recommended one. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's it. I don't have any more questions. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Of course. Well, if you don't have any of the questions, you don't have to return to the main room. You can just leave from our breakout session here. Um, but yeah, we look forward to seeing you if you come to our advising appointments. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah, of course. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. See ya.